Hi, everyone. <laughs> Tonight, we're joined by Ann Benson, who is here with us representing Treehouse Recovery. She will share with us some tips on the importance of caring for ourselves, even if it's only for a few minutes a day. So, Anne, if you are ready, I see that smiling face. Take care. <laughs> thank you, Kim, and thank you, everybody. I um, just wanted to. I'm. I just want to share. I am uh, so grateful for the Addicts Mom site. A little bit about me. Um, aside from my job at Treehouse Recovery, I am the mother of a of a, a two addicted children. One's in recovery, and one isn't. And I, I was trying to remember how many years ago I found the Addicts Mom site. It was somebody online recommended it in a conversation, and I ended up hooking into it. And um, it's been very helpful for me. I love the Addicts Mom. I love all the little branches of it. For a while, um, when we are so... Um, we have a lot of in us uh energy in us so much angst and anxiousness all that uh turmoil in us i was able to vent some of that it's got to be discharged but we want to discharge that energy we get um in a healthy way i found the addicts mom to be a way that i could reach out and not just share my own experience strength and hope but hear others and also their advocacy um, site, I was able to get involved with that. And on my um, own state uh, where I lived at the time, I was able to uh, volunteer with that. And I just find um, when we are active with our children and in this um, crazy adventure of trying to navigate our lives in a new way with a active addiction um, child, actively addict, addicted child. It's great to find outlets where we can positively navigate our energy um, because it's got to go somewhere. Um, it's a big deal to be a, to have a loved one as an addict uh, in our home that is addicted. It's a, it's a really big deal. And, um, and it's not uh, the addiction, the child that is the issue. It's the it's the addiction that's the issue. And I've learned a lot of this. I've learned a lot of skills through being active in the addicts mom site. Um, I've been probably have never. Uh, I am in recovery myself for twenty almost twenty five years, but that's not the point. I have never had to go to uh, residential residential rehab myself, but uh, between my children and and my husband, I I counted I've been to twenty rehabs because, <laughs> as you know, some of you, we are the ones that often. We'll get them to go, we'll manage the insurance, we'll arrange the plane ticket, we'll get the ride, we'll um, coordinate with the counselors, we're actively involved with, the, um, with the, the, the treatment centers, and if they end up staying, great, and when they come home, arranging the outpatients, there's a lot going on. Um, through this all, I realized that um, if I'm not careful taking care of myself, I can go absolutely crazy and have just as big a problem with my life only in a different way as the addicts in my life do. And I, um, we often say we learn by the speed of pain that I'm very strong willed. Um, I've had to, the things I've had to let go of, I think I sometimes think they have claw marks all over them because it's been hard. But um, there's a lot of growth can be done through um, this adventure. I choose to call uh, life with a um, now an, a, an adventure. It's how we, and this might be a coping skill, is looking at it through the frame of our lives being an adventure and not a nightmare. Um, how do we nurture ourselves through this? I can share. Um, the addict in our life, 
sometimes, let me just say, I've learned with Ju, uh, Julie Valenti with the wisdom and recovery with my own work and training that she says, the problem's not the problem. The problem is the solution. And when I learned that, um, for me, my incessant having to control and having to um, nag and having to take calls in the middle of the night and always being on hold and uh, not having healthy boundaries was my uh, was the problem for me became a real issue uh, emotionally for me but that was a problem but to me it was not really it was the best I knew how at the time so when they say the problem's not the problem the problem is the solution for me, the solution to having uh, my loved ones out there in active addiction was to try to be controlling, try to save them, trying to talk them into it, trying to, that I needed to take a look at my part in that and see, uh, was it really helping? I had um, alienated them completely. Um, if you have a loved one that doesn't want to get clean, and all you can do when you talk to them is lecture them about the importance of being clean and, and show them the latest residential treatments you found and, and try to sideways talk to them about going to meetings. They're going to not want to talk to you. My, why would they, my kids uh, weren't interested. Um, they would talk to me if I had money to give them or if I bribed them or if they needed something. But then that, that became kind of crazy too. I was going to show you um, something I've learned. I, I want you to imagine a mobile, a mobile, M-O-B-I-L-E. And I have one here just from outside. Some of you might have mobiles, and I used to collect them when I, but when we moved, we had to downsize, and so this is the one I kept. I kept one. But a family is kind of like. A mobile because there's little pieces of it and this is a small family it's got three people in it it could be a mom and two kids or a mom and a dad and a son or a mom a son and a grandma whatever it is you can imagine more pieces of the mobile and life on life's terms is always going to cause the family to have a little bit of turbulence and in an interdependent family where we're all kind of taking care of our stuff but have empathy and are there to support each other. We actually, the realistically, there is some, no life is stress-free, no life is problem-free. The pieces of the family kind of move together, they move apart, and it makes kind of a, you know, and it, I call it an adventure. I mean, this would be very boring. This is unrealistic for every family member to not have any issues, but, and you can imagine uh, there's all kinds of metaphors. The top of the mobile and the strings holding it together the, the, is the family dynamics, the rules, and the boundaries. But when you have somebody who is in active addiction and their brain literally gets hijacked, it's, it's not good. It's very bad. And so what do we do? We can't um, – we have to dis detach from them, but they're still not – they're still part of us. And we have to try to move our own lives as best we can and take that for what it was worth. That's my little cute metaphor. I want to share just for me my own four ways. I think I wrote down four ways that I have um, helped me uh, for self-care. Now, I am a, I call myself a recovering perfectionist. And an aspiring good enougher. Okay, I um, self care to me used to be well. How are you feeling? How, how's my son doing? Oh, my son is in residential treatment. He's doing great. I'm doing great because my son is doing great. I'm doing great. He got a job. He's working. He's going to meetings. Or uh, how's it going? Actually, I never would probably tell you it was going bad because I was too full of shame to really talk honestly about how things were really going in my family. But if things were bad with uh, with the, my loved ones, then I was having a terrible day. And um, 
I realized by I had um, I realized one day that holy smoke somebody asked me how they said no 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 not how how are you feeling when I they said how are you doing and I went ahead and I espoused how good my loved one was doing and I'm doing good so and so is in treatment so and so is going to work every day no no Annie how are you doing and I went it took me a minute I'm like did you not hear me I said so and so is going I, you know I haven't had to you know had no crisis lately no jail no no they want to know how I was doing I honestly was like whoa. I'm okay. I'm okay, but how am I feeling? I had to breathe in and I had to really figure that out because I'm just, uh, it's a codependent thing. So it is what it is. But I've learned, uh, as, as we do, that we eventually can have a good day, not because of what's going on in our lives. But in, sometimes in spite of what's going on in our lives, my goal is to um, have a good day because of the small bits of self-care that I can t I do. And self-care is not always um, getting your hair done or wearing makeup, although those, those are fun. Self-care can be just um, being good to yourself and I'm going to share some of that easy, cost-free tricks for um, tools. And as as we get in recovery, and we share without shame, and we talk to each other. We uh, the support is fantastic. You'll you, you learn lots of of these kind of things. Number one, I decided that I am not going to talk to a loved one someone or have a difficult conversation especially unless three things can happen and i've literally had to um sometimes write this down it, the three go-bys are am i about is what i'm about to say necessary is what i'm about to say kind and is what am i at what i'm about to say honest if i'm not speaking something that is kind necessary to say and honest I need to check myself, and sometimes I just need to stay quiet. Um, I sometimes want to text my daughter, who's in active addiction, like, how's it going? But really what I want to say is, like, are you, are you still, uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of manipulative, but I'll still, I'll still, what I've decided what I do with my daughter, she knows I know, I know she knows. I just tell, I will text her and I'll say, I love you, I'm thinking about you. Hey, I, I, I saw this today and it reminded me of you. I, it's really authentic and it's minding my own business and it's kind. I feel it's necessary because I, my mama heart wants to reach out to her and, it, and it's honest, if that makes sense. Uh, Several conversations I feel have have not had to escalate because of me. Me doesn't matter what else they're doing. It's my business for me to keep my side of the street clean. I make sure what I'm about to say is those three things. Am I about to say if it's just kind and it's necessary, but it's not honest? I don't say it if I can't think of a way. The second thing. On that note, when I'm asking myself, is it kindness to be honest, uh, I realized I can be critical or I can be curious. In the past, I was always judging, judging, judging. That was bad. That was good. That was mean. That was that was weird. That was, now or I just take a breath and I try to be curious instead of critical criticize i it, it comes from a softer place i tend to not even my volume is lower when i talk to uh, a loved one i i'm i can still be honest i can still say my what i'm about to say in a kind necessary honest way but it's more out of being curious and not critical and if i feel 
especially with ourselves, we are always, um, we're kind of, some of us were navigating this um, terrible uh, way the best we know how. And if we make a mistake, uh, do something that's we're sorry for later, we shouldn't be dissing on ourselves. We should just, uh, it's a real opportunity for growth for our, us if we take a breath. And just get curious about what was that about? Why did I, what was that? That was a trigger for me. That was, um, and so that was the second thing. And on the curious versus being criticism, having criticism, being curious, uh, there is an acronym that I remember, and it's only four letters, and it goes with RAIN. And, um, I will share with you what the, each of the letters of RAIN stand for. So if I'm feeling, and this is, um, this is to feel, the first R means to recognize. So if you're feeling like some kind of way, the first letter R is to just recognize. It could be, and it's like the basic, basic getting in touch with your body kind of thing. Like, oh my, for me, my shoulders go up when I'm stressed out. Or um, I, I freeze, like um, I, so if I find myself like going, whoa, like something's up and I, my body's not relaxed, I recognize that. And then the A stands for acknowledge it. So we're done being in denial. Uh, denial is don't even know I am lying, denial. We're done saying, like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. We're going to say, oh, whoa, acknowledge, like, my stomach hurts. Or I'm feeling even just to say some kind of way, because even before, right when I was beginning to get out of my codependent thinking, I didn't really even know how Annie felt. I just knew, like, whoa, what was that? Oh, it was a feeling. Huh? And then I'd have to breathe in. So I recognize it. I acknowledge it. And then investigate is the I. Like my stomach is some, my stomach is tight. My shoulders feel tight. And um, I'm wondering what that's about. Getting curious, not getting critical. And then the, the N stands for nurture. So uh, it could be, wow, I remember a trigger. Some... Don't let anyone tell you that we don't get PTSD from this um, life because we do. We we get our own special when the phone calls in the middle of the night. There's one. I'm like, ah, um, or uh, just sometimes I've felt uh, if I, one of my kids would come home and they were just tired, but they weren't high or anything, it would it would be like. I would like be recognize, oh, I'm feeling scared. I acknowledge that it's not, I'm scared, my stomach, I'm being suspicious and then investigate, well, this has happened before and when it's happened before, it's because they were high or whatever and then um, is this is this something I have control over? I need to. The N is to nurture, to to acknowledge it, and to take care of myself. And how I take care of myself is not by taking care of other people anymore. I know uh, things I can do to help me to maintain my own clear thinking. Um, we don't. When eighty over eighty percent of our our thoughts and actions are from the lower part of our brain, the limbic system, where we react, react, react. Now, as thoughtful mom, mama bears, still have that mama bear, we want to try to get our our um, thinking brain to help calm down anything that'll keep us from reacting. There's a huge power in knowing the difference between acting and reacting. When we can come to from a place where we're calm and and authentic with our speech and our behavior, we and we're healthy. It just it it permeates 
our 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 lives. Anyone around us has benefited from that. You've heard the adage that says, "If Mama ain't happy, no one's happy." Truly, we have the power to really influence in a beautiful way those around us, whether no matter who they are or what they're doing or what choices they're making, just by being a uh, light and and love and calm ourselves, working our own program, as some would say. So that uh, the the fourth the fourth strategy I have for um, individual self care to help me from freaking out is um, to take and I learned this from Brene Brown, who I'm sure you might have heard of. She's fantastic. Uh, to take a one inch by one inch piece of paper and on that one inch by one inch piece of paper you write down everybody's name who whose opinion matters to you if you can't if the paper's not big enough then you need to make your list of people who matter to, about you like that smaller because when we go around and we try to please everybody, we end up um, getting spread way too thin and our boundaries get really wishy-washy, goosey-goosey. And so that I have, I actually have one more I can start. I knew I would talk kind of fast maybe, but um, there is, when you do need to communicate, uh, there's a five parts you can remember. I see, blah, 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 blah. And this is what I think about it. This is what I feel about it. I'd like you to do this. And then will you be willing? And remember, um, that's a, that's a called the five part com communication. I see, blah, blah, blah. This is what I think about it and what I feel about it. This is what I'd like to have happen. Are you willing or what do you think? So that is an, I, the tools we have and we can get in our tool belt. The more tools we have and can get in our tool belt for, for living life on life's terms, the better, uh, the more happier and more successful we can be um, just having a great day again not because of what's happening but in spite of what's happening um i appreciate everybody that showed up tonight and um i think that's all i wanted to share unless there's any questions that is awesome if you have questions anyone go ahead and type them into that chat box and we will present them to Anne and give her a minute to, to um, speak to those. I had just typed, I really liked your uh, mobile example. For one mm -hmm. thing, I love wind chimes and that sort of thing. Um, but at times my family has certainly been a collision. Like when you were, you know, moving it together and, and all the pieces hitting each other. Um, right. Your vision we did, pulling one right. way to stop that conflict right. or that noise. That that was profound. Thank you. It, you're welcome. It takes a lot to be able to do that. It's not our nature as mamas, as parents, to detach or let our loved ones go. At least, and sometimes we feel like it is letting them go. But honestly, we are respecting their choices. And for me, I would tell my children in active addiction i will not enable the addict i do i'm at war with the disease i'm at war with the addict i'm not going to give it money i'm not going to feed it i'm not going to do anything to make to to make that uh the addict part i love the person i love my children i pray for them every chance i get as a matter of fact they say there's nothing you can do you have to let them go there is in my opinion now you can pray you can send out good energy you can think positive thoughts you can 
Uh, take really, really good care of yourself. Get as educated as you can. Reach out for support. I'm so grateful for each of you for being here tonight because I do need to share without shame. Our, uh, our society, we've got way too much shame. There's too much shame and there's too much stigma around the addiction. No one will bring us a casserole when our kid relapses. Not that cancer or something else is, is not as bad, but it's terrible as well. But for us, um, we are dealing with a life or death disease, and we should not have to um, go this path alone. We need to be um, sharing in, in a non judgmental uh, way and, and, and giving each other um, empathy and support. Absolutely. Thank you. And Michelle um, types, when I was communicating with my AD who lives in Washington and I'm in Florida, the only thing I've asked of her is to check in weekly with me. On Friday when she checked in, it had been over two weeks and I was very angry. So how do you I'll respond bet. to them? She's not enabled and she knows that her family's affected. How do we respond? Do you again, definitely in a necessary, kind, and honest way. And you know what? You've got to discharge that. You can't just pretend it was, didn't affect you. Uh, again, I, I was, instead of I see, you could say, and I, ha I have the five-part communication written down, but really, if you practice it, it it's second nature probably because it, it makes so much sense. When, when I didn't hear from you and I thought you were going to call weekly, I, I really thought scary thoughts. I felt super anxious. Um, I'd really like it a lot if you would call weekly like we committed to. Are you willing to do that? At least you're getting your words out. Uh, that was a good question, and that's a real-life situation. Yeah, it sure is. Thank you so much. Right. And on that note, if you're mad at your daughter, you can just, you've got to tell her how you feel, but definitely vent here or in the addicts, mom, vent your head off, call some, call a friend and just scream at them. Don't scream at your addict. She's very, very ill. She's just, she's just ill. So it's very hard. You have to have those boundaries, but you got to also understand it's not her that's being uh, dissing you and putting you off it's it's her addict that's my opinion yeah that's what the beauty of our group right we can talk things over so, with each other so i don't definitely. see any more questions um and there we go um and i really want to thank you for being with us tonight we appreciate you being here and we love your examples. And uh, yeah, I hope that we'll see you again and we'll certainly see you on the group, right? Definitely. Yes, definitely. You're all in my heart and I'm rooting for all of us. Thank you so much, Kim. Indeed. Thank you.